runs up my blood pressure. When you come up to a black woman and you say things like, wow, you're so beautiful. Oh, thank you, brother. Keep going. Nah, you mad exotic. Like, what you mixed with? I'm mixed with black. Nah, but you too, you, you, you mad pretty. Like, you got something else in you. You too pretty to be black. Me done say black. Well, mm. Oh, why are you insulted? Like, that's a compliment. Well, to a black woman who isn't there as yet in her journey, where she doesn't know herself, that's a compliment. Yeah, you know, my great, great, great step grand roach is this. But to a conscious black woman, a woman who knows herself, that's an insult, okay? That is not a compliment. Because you're telling me the original woman, that me, I could be mixed with somebody else to be supreme. Excuse me? Huh? You really also order for that. And furthermore, this word exotic is so misused. It just simply means different from the norm. It has nothing to do with being of a specific race or being mixed or anything like that. And by definition, black women, the most diverse women on earth, are exotic. Hello, welcome to the Melanin Gold channel. My name is Penny. And um, I want to get to you about a certain terminology, a certain word, um, the word exotic. You hear it, the word a lot. Um, and I usually hear it from like um, men and particularly black men. Um, when they kind of describe the type of women they're into sometimes, um, they'll either use the word like mixed or like, and they'll use it, um, the word exotic interta interchangeably. And it's very interesting to me because when I hear people say exotic, I do think, and a lot of people think, um, like Kim Kardashian, or they'll think someone like um, J Lo, or maybe like a an Indian girl or something. Um, but it's you know I think that's a term that is greatly misused, and a lot of people don't get that term. Um. And I hear a lot of black people um, in particular use this word, misuse it so often. And it's like, I just feel people lack knowledge of what that word really means. Because if you really think about it, anybody can be exotic. I mean, to us as black people, you have to be, it's almost like your beauty as a black person has to be diluted by another race like you got to have a little bit of Indian or Asian or white in you um to be considered quote unquote exotic in the black community and you know I hear a lot of black people particularly black women always brag about oh girl um I got Indian in my family or um I got white or Asian that's why um I look so exotic and mixed and that's why my hair texture is loose or it's this certain way and a lot of people don't understand us being we are black people we are the original man us being the original man everything that we view as exotic originally came from us like I was reading an article not too long ago that said that blue eyes and you know how in the black, we always brag about pe black community. We always brag about people who have lighter complected eyes and view them as somewhat exotic, having exotic eyes. But I was reading an article that stated that scientists discovered that blue eyes came originally came from black people out of Africa. And I, and I think in the same article, it also said that blonde hair came out of black people as well, out of Africa. And I'm like, okay, we're all over here bragging about being mixed with other races and, oh, this is why my eyes or my hair or hair color is this way or my texture is this way. But it's like, you know, the lady in the video that I showed before the video clip, she's right. It's just, we don't know ourselves. We really don't. And I just looked up the term um, exotic in the dictionary. And the first two um, 
um, definitions. One for exotic is one of foreign origin or character, not native, introduced from abroad, but not fully naturalized or acclimatized. Um, strikingly unusual or strange in effect of appearance. Um, and that is pretty much the gist of it. It's just the term exotic basically means something you don't see every day where you live. Like, for example, if I were to, me as a dark-skinned black woman, go to fly right now to Siberia, Russia, where there's nothing but white people and they have never in their life laid eyes on a black person, to them, those white people in Siberia, Russia, me as a black woman, I'm something exotic to them. And vice versa, if I'm a white woman were to go to an, an island off the coast of Africa or some secluded place in Africa where a lot of foreigners don't go and they never see white people and this white woman just with blonde hair, blue eyes just showed up, to them that white woman would be something exotic because they never seen anything like her before. So, and you know what? That reminds me of two things. Um, I mentioned Russia before. You know what? It reminds me of this documentary that I saw on YouTube about an African family. They were from the country Rwanda. And they actually went to um, moved to um, Russia for, um, to study medicine. I think they were studying to be doctors and they end up meeting each other in school in Russia, fell in love and ended up, um, getting their, um, PhDs as doctors in Russia. And as I said before, they were from Rhonda and around that time when they were studying, the plan was to go back to Rwanda and be doctors. But at that time, war broke out in Rwanda, so they couldn't go back. So one thing led to another, and they ended up becoming farmers in the middle of Siberia, Russia. Like, I don't know how that happened, how they went from having PhDs to becoming farmers, but that's what ended up happening. And pretty much in the middle of... Siberia and in this small little Russian town they are the only black people for for mouths there are no black people matter of fact in all even if you go to Moscow you won't run into you can count the black people on your hand because it's nothing but white people in that part of Europe and what ended up happening, um, they ended up having kids and eventually those kids grew up to the point where they were old enough to be sent off to go to school. And what happened it did when the first day when they went to school, all of the white students and the white teachers um, at that school were in complete shock and complete awe. They've never laid eyes on kids that look like them ever. And to us as black American people, they were just some some little black kids um, with kinky hair and braids. But to them, they were running over to them, touching their skin. Um, I think they made a statement that people thought that they painted their skin dark, a dark chocolate brown. Um, they were, um, there were students that they interviewed that were amazed by their hair texture. And one of the girls had braids and like they were amazed by that. Um, and I remember they even said that um, students from a nearby school transferred to their school where the black um, African kids were to see what they looked like, looked like. So to them, 
Those kids were something exotic. They were something unique, something special. And come to think of it, for me, it reminds me of um, other stories in my own personal life. Um, I remember going to high school, and the high school I went to was a predominantly white high school on the north side of Chicago in a predominantly white neighborhood. Um, and I remember there was this boy, white guy named Peter. And for some reason, every time, like, I, he also had a crush on me, I later discovered. But, like, every time, like, I would come with my hair done a different way, like, I would kind of go back and forth from getting micro braids to my permed hair he was just amazed about <laughs> he was just um enlightened with me like I, I think it had a little bit to do with him having a crush on me but also it had to do with like he was in fact from Russia Moscow Moscow Russia and you know there's not as I said before there's not a lot of black people who live in that that part of the world so him being like a pretty new immigrant from another country and there not being a whole lot of black people attending the school let alone black girls I'm coming in with my hair in different kinds of ways that he probably never seen before and he's just and he I remember he would do double takes like turning his head looking at me because he was just so amazed and I remember he he was that like white boy, white boy in high school that hangs around with all the black guys, and I remember um, them just kind of laughing at like his um male black male friends kind of laughing at him and saying, "Oh, we see chicks like that in the hood all the time. You know, they wear, wear braids all the time. They ain't nothing new." But to him, it was just I was this, in a sense, an exotic creature. Like I was just something so out of the ordinary for him and it's kind of funny because he actually ended up asking me out to prom twice to junior and senior prom and I turned him down for both and I actually went to senior prom with his black friend <laughs> and then, you know I look back I feel kind of bad that you know maybe I should just want to wanted to prom with him you know it wasn't like we were getting married but I just use that story as example you don't know um that the word exotic is is very misused and people don't know what could be exotic for one person could be the norm for another and also another thing i noticed about black people or black americans um for some reason for um a lot of people to them i look african like, I don't know how you can tell the difference between an African person and a black American, but a lot of people either think I'm like African or I'm from the Caribbean. And I remember once in my neighborhood, um, I was just having a conversation at like the train stop um, with this guy living in my neighborhood. And he's just like, oh, are, are you from like, um, he asked me if I was a different race and I'm like no I'm black like you and he's like oh I, th I thought you were something exotic like from the Caribbean like I thought you were like Jamaican and he, I was like um you do know that they're black too right so it's I think a lot of um black Americans well some black Americans think that people from like different parts of the Caribbean or different parts of Africa to them that's something exotic being from another land so people's, I mean, people's definition of exotic varies. Like you can walk up to 20 different people and ask them what is, what does exotic mean? And hell, you could probably get almost 20 different definitions. So um, the reason why I did this video, because I want um, just black women to know, particularly dark-skinned black women to know, that, you know, hell, being you, being a kinky-haired woman with dark skin, that's something exotic. That's something beautiful. Um, 
a matter of fact, I personally think women who straighten their hair and get hair weaves and bleach their skin, in a sense, to me, they're killing their exoticness. Because what? Because if, if being exotic is what makes you unique, isn't kinky hair make you unique? I mean, how there's not too many people who have kinky hair texture like black people. Isn't you having very highly melanated dark skin especially if you're a dark skin girl you having highly melanated dark skin isn't that something unique isn't that some that should be viewed as something exotic because there's no barely any other race of people who have well there's a few but but for the most part the only race of people that have very dark skin people are, are us, black people. And I just want dark-skinned black women to know that you're something so special and you should be revered. And you don't have to be mixed with anything else to be viewed as beautiful or something special. Your, um, your special features that you have already is something beautiful and should be revered by many. And if people really instead of bleaching their skin and killing their hair to get it straight and damaging and killing their hair to get it straight, work with your natural features. Um, hell, if you want longer hair, try, like there's different um, websites where you can, instead of buying the straight weave, you can get like a kinky weave that goes with your hair texture. I mean, hell, if you're willing to spend hundreds of dollars on straight European hair, why not spend it on the kinky long weave? Um, there's, um, companies that specializing, specializes in giving your darker skin glow, a glow. There's a company called, I believe, Blended Skin, where they have serums, where it helps kind of bring, um, the beauty of darker skin and the undertones of your darker complected skin. And also they have a serum I forget what it's called, but a serum that helps with um, um, black people having tending to have oily skin more than other races because of our sebaceous glands are being so large underneath our skin. We produce more oil, which makes our skin more shiny. Um, you can try that product. Um, there's like... Um, I'm trying, I know Bath and Body Works has an oil that has like a, a gold tint to it. And another company, um, I forget the name of it. Oh, NARS. NARS, they have body oils that have like gold tints to them where you can put that gold, like kind of mix some of that with your lotion or put it on by itself. And like that gold tint in that oil can kind of bring out the colors in your skin and, you know, make you look, um, bring out the undertones and make you look, your skin look beautiful. But instead of, um, doing that, looking for products to make our skin more profound and more bring out the natural beauty in it, we, we, um, fall for what society tells us and we go get skin bleaching creams and we strain our hair and get these nasty ratchet weaves in our hair, but um, we don't work with our own skin color. We don't see that as beautiful for some reason. And I purposely in my videos, well, in my future videos and in this video, I'm literally going on like pin interest and I go on different Facebook pages that I follow and I find like photos of the most beautiful darker complected women and I'm not one of those people where I just find like photos of dark skinned people and throw it on my video just because they're dark um no I find people where of different body types different hair textures um different dark skin tones even um, and I put them in my videos to show that beauty is not, as a black woman, it's not in one skin color. It's not in one body type. Um, 
that you as a black woman are beautiful. And I also like some, most of these people in this video, particularly I use are either models, actresses, beauty queens, etc. like people who are in the entertainment industry to some extent, the media who are overlooked. Like you don't see these women often. You don't see them in, in media. So I purposely um, put these photos to show you th that it's not just the Kelly Rowlands and the Lupitas and Naomi Campbell who are the only beautiful women, black women. Um, yeah, and you know, that's all I have to say about that. You know, comment, rate, subscribe, and I hope you have a blessed day. Thank you. Bye.